In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option, coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. If you like our work, would you please hit the subscribe button? Won't cost you a penny. No formalities. If you have money to spare, would you send us something via Patreon or PayPal, which would be a huge help to us. Please keep the comments coming. They also help with the algorithm. And above all, will you please keep us in your masses and in your prayers? I promised myself I wasn't going to talk about this again. Because of the leathering I got the last time I talked about it. But I can't keep quiet. The Ukraine. When are we going to see high-powered negotiations for peace? When is the suffering of that poor country going to be brought to an end? When is the crucifixion of the ordinary people of the Ukraine going to be brought to an end? Now, I, I must say, Claire Daly, the European MEP, and I probably wouldn't agree with her on the time of day normally. I have to say I'm proud of her. I'm proud of her. She has kept this issue at the forefront, as has Mick Wallace. When are we going to see high-powered negotiations, by which I mean negotiations backed by the great powers, to bring the suffering of the Ukrainian people to an end? And before you start on me that I'm a priest and what do I know about politics or anything, I'm a citizen and I'm an adult of moderate intelligence and I'm entitled to speak my mind. And I'm going to speak my mind. This is wrong. This is crazy. The, we're treating Russia as if it were the sick man of Europe and it's going to implode any day soon. I don't, I don't see that Russia is about to implode. What I do see is they're about to wreck the Ukraine from one end to the other. They're about to leave a smoking ruin of a vast country in the middle of Europe if this matter is not brought to the negotiating table. Now you, you will say to me, well, why, why should the Ukrainians have to give up a single thing? I seem to remember a small country in Western Europe which fought for its freedom against the British Empire, the great superpower of the time, even after the First World War, which had left it very badly shaken. It was a victor. I seem to remember a small country whose negotiators were offered semi-independence on the basis of a partition of the country in order to facilitate those who wished to retain a, a link with the empire, with, with, with the centre of the empire, with the United Kingdom. Who was that country, I wonder? Why, yes, it was my country. And what did our negotiators do when threatened with immediate and terrible war? I think I'm quoting accurately. If they did not sign the treaty that was proposed. They signed. And we lost a good section of our territory in order to, in order to forestall a war that would have turned our country into something that would look like a dragon's nest, badly managed, a smoking ruin. I think as an Irishman and as an Irish Christian and priest, I am very well placed to make this plea. God in his mercy look down on the Ukraine because there are so many hard hearts who seem to be willing to play out geopolitical games at the expense of those poor people who have suffered so much. And before you start dismissing me as, as one of the favourite words of the occasional troll we have to deal with, as a shill for, for the Russians, I don't speak a word of Russian. I believe it's a beautiful country I believe the Ukraine is a beautiful country. I wish nothing but blessings on both countries. It just occurs to me, I like living in the West. I'm not, look, I'm not 
being anti-Western. It just occurs to me, as I've said before, our hands aren't clean in this. We owe a debt. We should be getting off our backsides and working towards urgent negotiations to stop the suffering in the Ukraine. I can only imagine the misery and fear that people are living in. And it's a meat grinder. It's a meat grinder. Most, most of the vast majority of the injuries, of the, of the terrible injuries and, and casualties and, and deaths that the Ukrainians have suffered have been from Russian artillery. And that is a time-hallowed Russian military approach, is, is massive artillery bombardment. You pound something into dust. The Russians will keep doing it. And I need hardly point out that they seem to have, I wouldn't say made friends with China. That might be a bit extreme. And they're certainly not getting married, shall we say. But they seem to be sitting down and having a Pepsi. I really think we should be careful here. And have we forgotten we're dealing with an, a massive nuclear power? Like, how much are we willing to bet on this? I'm asking again, where are the Bismarcks, the Gladstones? Where, where is diplomacy? Where is statesmanship? Where is realpolitik in the best sense of the word? Well, there is realpolitik, and not in a good sense. There's realpolitik that seems to feel that we will wage a proxy war in the Ukraine and we will, we will bleed the Russians dry, irrespective of the fact that the more, pun the, the, the more the Russians suffer, the more dangerous the situation becomes because of their nuclear weapons. Do I need to be Kissinger to notice that? And Kissinger, incidentally did not approve at all of the expansion of, of NATO, nor did that great diplomat George Kennan. This is crazy stuff. Now, you can call me what you want. You can call me a shill. You can call me a stupid little priest. Well, you're right about that bit. Uh, you, you can call me this. You can call me this, that, or the undignified other. I'm telling you now, this will come to no good if we continue with it. It will bring the curse of history down upon us. And we're lucky if God's curse doesn't follow. What's going on is that an amazing and beautiful people are being fired up to take on a dragon, to take on a massive power. This is crazy stuff. We're sending them to their deaths. I'm not saying the Russians should get everything they want. Of course I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying they were right to invade. Although I do believe there was some provocation. This has to end. This has to end. It's having a terrible effect. And that whole business with the gas pipeline. I mean, I admire the United States. I love the United States. The United States kept the West of Ireland alive. I've said this before again and again for a good century. We could never begin to repay the debt we owe to the United States. But I don't think the United States is the Archangel Gabriel. It's a powerful modern state. And it's suiting itself. No disrespect. I hope to God this does... I hope to God people know what they're doing. By which I mean to say... I'm not sure people know what they're doing. That whole business with the pipeline, that this whole business with talking about nuclear war as if as, as if it were just a, another escalation or something. That's not an escalation. That's endgame. Please, will you pray for the Ukraine? Please, for the love of God, will you pray for an early negotiated peace in the Ukraine? I'm not even asking for brotherly love. I'm not even asking for faith. Dear Lord, at this stage, bog standard statesmanship would be acceptable. I mean it. God seriously bless us all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>